why you should care about COVID-19 if you are young and healthy. Hey everybody, Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. Welcome to my channel, your number one source for information on orthopedic surgery, sports medicine, injuries that's easy to understand for everybody. If you wanna know more about my life as an orthopedic surgeon, be sure to follow me on Instagram or Twitter at Stable Knees. I'm also on TikTok at Dr. Chris Rayner. And if you're looking for workouts, exercises, or information on injury prevention, be sure to follow us on our sister channel on YouTube, Human 2.0. As you know, I'm on a mission to educate everybody about orthopedics and sports medicine. So to help me do that, please share this video with anyone who you think might be interested in this topic. Scratch that. Share this video with everyone that you know because this video applies to everyone. This topic affects us all. With that being said, Hit the notification bell and let's get to the topic at hand. Recently, the COVID-19 pandemic has prompted some rather drastic actions both abroad and at home here in North America. At present, the number of infected here has remained relatively small, although it continues to rise steadily. In anticipation of what might be coming, governments both federal and provincial or state level in the US Municipal administrations and healthcare authorities have enacted sweeping changes that have greatly affected our daily lives. All of these changes that include quarantines, travel restrictions, and social distancing, among others, have been enlisted with the hope of not preventing the arrival of the epidemic or containment, but rather the mitigation of the epidemic, which focuses on slowing but not necessarily stopping the epidemic spread. At a point where we in the Western world have not yet accurately determined the true number and identity of the infected, it is hard for many to understand why these measures are needed. All sport and entertainment events have been canceled. Schools have been closed. Gatherings of more than 100, 50, or even 10 people depending on the community, have been banned. Restaurants have been ordered to close and travel has been severely curtailed or even restricted. Many people, including some celebrities, have questioned the necessity for these restrictions and some have openly mocked them. Several young entertainers, such as Vanessa Hudgens, have posted social media rants about the inconvenience of the restrictions and have shown little regard for the possible effects of the epidemic spread. Yeah, till July sounds like a bunch of bullshit. I'm sorry. But like, it's a virus, I get it. Like, I respect it. But at the same time, like, even if everybody gets it, like, yeah, people are gonna die. It's just terrible, but like, inevitable? Post Malone, performed at a sold out show of 18,000 in Denver, Colorado on March 12th of 2020. Despite the fact that all sporting venues had already been canceled and that there had been a call to stop gatherings of more than 50 persons nearly nationwide. College partygoers on their March break vacation in Florida railed about the inconvenience of the restrictions and the apparent mildness of the COVID-19 disease, particularly in the young. If I get Corona, I get Corona. At the end of the day, I'm not gonna let it stop me from partying. You know, I've been waiting two months we've had this trip planned. Like it's really messing up with my spring break. It is really hard to blame them because they just don't know the facts and they just have not done the math. Now is the time for education and freaking action. Despite the relative mildness of the disease in the young and its apparent preference for the elderly and the infirm, there are several reasons why you, the young and the healthy, should be concerned about COVID-19. Number one, as a young person, it is relatively easy for you to infect others, since most people who are infected have mild symptoms and often don't even know that they are infected. It is important not to unnecessarily infect the elderly, immunocompromised, and the sick around you. Although illness due to COVID-19 is generally mild, especially for children and young adults, about one in every five people who are infected with COVID-19 need 
hospital supportive care. While you might not become sick if you are infected with the virus, you may be the carrier that brings the virus to someone else who might become severely sick or who might die from the disease. When we have a new or novel disease introduced into a population for the first time, we do not have the benefit of immunity or vaccines to limit the spread. And therefore, other measures are required to do this. Number two, as the incubation period may be long, anywhere from two to 10 days, and the symptoms are relatively mild for most, approximately 80% of those who are infected, it is easy really easy to spread the virus to others without knowing it. You want to avoid unnecessarily spreading the virus and prolonging the duration of time that it is prevalent in our population. Coronavirus spreads exponentially. Let me repeat that. Coronavirus spreads exponentially. That means really freaking fast. And the predictions of what is to come are not prophecy. They are simply math. The quicker we can isolate the virus and stop its spread to new victims, the sooner we can allow it to burn itself out and the quicker we can end the necessary restrictions. The spread can be slowed, public officials say, if people practice social distancing by avoiding public spaces and generally limiting their movement. Number three, although mortality is presently higher in the elderly, young people can still get seriously ill from this infection. Nearly one half of the seriously ill in some European countries are under the age of 50 years old. The virus can mutate or change at any time and you could become its new target. Number four, limited medical supplies are available for use. Not just for COVID-19, but for everything. If we allow the system to be overwhelmed unnecessarily with people who arrive at the same time from a sudden rapid influx of COVID-19 patients, rather than in trickles, we will be forced to have to choose who to look after with the limited supplies. This could mean physicians choosing not to save someone you love, but it could also mean physicians not having the necessary supplies available with which to treat you if something happens to you that needs regular medical attention. For example, a fracture or something like that. What matters is not only the total number of infections, but also whether many infections occur at one time. The healthcare system has a fixed capacity, so a flatter curve ensures that the demand for healthcare does not exceed its supply. Overloaded hospitals and shortages of ventilators in intensive care units could result in people dying unnecessarily from the coronavirus, as well as from heart attacks and other ailments. Number five, it is imperative to avoid the rapid spread of the disease that can easily overwhelm the medical system in general. This is important so that we leave the medical system able to render the appropriate care of which it is currently capable to those in need, regardless of the medical condition that they present with. If we allow the pandemic to get out of hand, there will not be enough physicians available to care for everyone. And those who are available will be tremendously overworked and fatigued. Shortages of protective equipment like masks, gloves and gowns and chaos in hospitals may lead to higher death rates to all, including you. The healthcare system has a fixed capacity. So a flatter curve ensures that the demand for healthcare does not exceed its supply. And if you think I said that before, that's because I did. Number six. It should be our goal to prevent prolonged isolation of our population with 
extended periods of work interruptions, which could lead to a breakdown of infrastructure and our necessary supply chains. The longer the pandemic persists, the more likely this breakdown of supply chains and the eventual shortage of basic necessities will occur. Much of our society is now based around on-demand and just-in-time supply lines. This pandemic could clearly expose the limitations of this type of approach to society quite quickly as limited supplies of necessary goods are quickly depleted and then supply chains are cut due to travel restrictions. And finally, number seven. People in North America are basing their opinions on the current numbers of infected and sick. These numbers represent only those who were first infected two weeks ago and are a gross underestimation of the number of people presently infected today, like right now. It does not represent the ones silently walking among us who are infected now, but not yet symptomatic. If you just consider for a moment every place that you have been over the past two weeks and every surface that you have touched and every single person with whom you have had contact with and consider that every one of those people might have become infected by you, were you a carrier or infected, you start to see the magnitude of the problem. The best way to control the virus is to identify those who are presently infected, like as quickly as possible. Quarantine all of those who are infected to prevent them from infecting others. Treat all of the current infections, allowing them to burn out without infecting anybody else. Keep vigilant and screen the symptomatic for new infections to avoid a new outbreak, because yes, this could come back into the population rather easily. And finally, establish a vaccination program to develop a sufficient degree of immunity in the population to prevent further outbreaks. In the end, this is what is necessary to flatten the curve. We can change the rapid spread into a slow trickle, which is manageable, rather than a torrent, which is not. Social distancing is an important aspect of this that is needed to slow the transmission of the disease. We all need to take this seriously and do our part to protect the population, both young and old, well and infirm. Only together will we get through this. As we stand on the beach watching the tsunami wave approaching, we can either roll up our sleeves and start building up the levees, or we can remain oblivious and do nothing until the moment that the wave is upon us. As always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho.